Hey guys, what's happening? So I thought tonight we would go ahead and go through one of the latest projects that I'm working on, and that is the Laughing Skull Nebula. This puppy right here got about 20 hours worth of data on it, of course, showing what we can do with the Red Cat 51, normal light pollution filter, Bortle 6 type of skies. Looks really good. A uh, link to the data is down below in the description uh, to the share drive. So you guys can go ahead and download the original version and play along with the processing and let me know what uh, you guys have done yourselves. Also down there, it's my first picture I've posted to Astro Ben. So I've got my Astro Ben name channel down there. And I guess I need to start searching some of you guys out as well on Astro Ben. So really cool the advanced plate solving and everything just to see like literally all of the amazing things that are inside this one picture it's just insane when you hover over it and look at all of that stuff but anyway let's get to some pretty simple processing on this image so one shot color it's got all the problems that typically you would have with one shot color and that's just kind of trying to control the the actual like background type of you know colors and noise and stuff that you're going to pick up when you're shooting in a broadband type of thing so basically what i've done here is first thing i've done is run it through uh Graxpert, gradient expert as i like to call it and you can see that the image looks a lot bigger of course 2600 mc pro um this big star here this all this haloing that's around it a lot half of this data was shot in really great conditions and half of it was shot during like wildfire smoke but i just could not let go of the clear nights but there's definitely a huge difference when it comes to the actual data itself so the first thing i'm going to do is i want to rotate it because the flying the skull is kind of like down here and then we're just going to go ahead and crop it and get rid of all that nonsense right there so that way we can just focus on the main target and as we saw from the play solve there is a lot of stuff that is inside there so that is all pretty simple stuff and the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to do um an old school uh, color calibration on this instead of worrying about doing the SPCC or whatever you know I just like color not really into the whole scientific thing it's cool every once in a while so we're just going to make a preview right here and we're going to select that as our reference there and we'll go ahead and drag and drop that for the color calibration and now we'll have to reapply our screen stretch. So everything should be color calibrated pretty good. And we'll delete that little preview so we can zoom in. Take a look at everything that we got going on right there. Probably now would be the best time to use our friend Blur Exterminator. And just because I like to keep things a little bit simple, um, we're just going to run this at default settings and not do anything as far as trying to find the actual uh, full with half max and all that. There's not really a lot of stellar stuff inside of here to correct or sharpen. We won't go into a lot of that in this tutorial. Uh, you guys can play along with that down the road if you want to so there we go blur exterminator and you know this image is drizzled because i'm horribly horribly undersampled of course with the red cat and the 2600 but i really do not care because it still looks amazing so using a lot of the masters of pix insights type of settings here Going to go ahead and drop Noise Exterminator on here at a full amount. And we can see that it did a great job as it always does. We'll close that out. And now we're pretty much ready to stretch the image. So I'm going to turn off the stream stretch and go over to the Easy Processing Suite and just use the Easy Soft Stretch. 
it's kind of up to you how far you want to stretch this. I would rather understretch it at the beginning than overstretch it. Um, I can always come back in later at the end and kind of give it a final touch within Pix and Sight if I want to. Um, but we'll go ahead and just run this at a 0.25 now to get our main stretch. And you can see that even that star is still coming in over here on the side. But we can uh, we can take care of that no problem. So the next thing we are going to want to do to try to work on this image is we're going to need to get rid of the stars. And we're going to need a copy of them. And that's going to allow us to pull this and stretch this out a whole lot more and to work on some of the stuff that's left over from one shot color cameras. So we'll go ahead and close that and we'll kind of put our stars over here and we'll bring those up because this is a really good comparison uh, to do. And this is kind of one of the big things that I've been doing in my one shot color processing now that has really just kind of cleaned up the images and made them a lot better. So if we take a look here at the image, you can see that we have all of this residual effects left over from the different stars and everything. Now, some of this stuff, of course, you know, these are actual galaxies and things like that. So we don't want to mess with those. But what we want to do is we want to take care of things like this right in here, which are the bloat that's left over from these bigger stars. Uh, before we do that, let's just go ahead and do a quick curves transformation on this just to kind of brighten things up a little bit. So we can see all of our background values here are kind of all falling within the histogram and the stuff that we want, this really bright stuff is kind of right there. So I'm gonna pull down some of this background just a little bit and then we'll just raise this just a tad to bring out a little bit more contrast into the image there. All right, that's good. So we'll bring up our stars again so we can kind of look and see. We can see that this matches with this and this big blue star matches with this right here. So to make this easy, we can use the clone stamp and clean all of this up really easy. And I'm gonna go ahead and reset it. We'll do like a radius of 80. And how clone stamp works is just wanna find an area that is kind of neutral like say right here. And if we control and then click, if we control click right there, if we can kind of just well, paint over that area. And if you want to ever reset it, all you got to do is grab a new part. So let's go down here and blend that in a little bit. You can see we're just kind of making everything kind of the same. And we can zoom in a little bit here and see if there is anything that is more of a star residual that we don't really want and need. So got some right here and if you want to you can also turn your opacity down here as well so that way it's not like totally blowing everything out but this is a very very useful tool that Pixinsight has that a lot of people don't know about uh, one thing i don't like is this right here even though this is uh, more kind of dust that is there. It's kind of really not adding anything to the image. So I am just going to get rid of it just like that. And not going to mess with anything here in the center. Bring that area up a little bit. And that looks pretty good for a quick job. So now that will actually, you know, clean up all and we won't have all those big halos and stuff around everything. Um, I would like to kind of do something with this right here. Let's see if we can turn our opacity like way down 
And let's try to click like right oh. here. Oh, don't like that. Oh, too late now. Yeah, there we go. We'll just leave it like that right there. Because if you hit start, then you got to start all the way over. Which we can do that right now if we wanted to. So we can actually control click right here. And we can just kind of take that out that we put back in. And we can just make it look like it was part of the nebula right there. Nobody will ever know. All right. Boom. So that is clone stamping. How we can clean some of that stuff up. If we pull up our stars now. I think there might be one more area maybe up in here where we got these big stars here but i think for tutorial purposes it's good enough i think everybody can kind of see like what the whole process is it works a lot better in photoshop using the healing tool as far as like kind of mimicking all of the pixels around it but just to keep everything within pix and sight this is what we'll do so let's go ahead and let's try to make us a mask real quick. So we're going to click on range selection and reset that and do a real time preview. And what I want to do is try to grab as much of the nebula as we can. And then if we want to, we can actually come back in with the clone stamp tool and clean this up if we want to. So I think that looks pretty good right there. And so you can see our mask that we're going to turn this into here. You can see that there's just kind of some different bits everywhere that, you know, it's going to apply some stuff to that we may or may not want. So again, just to kind of show you what we can do, we can actually clone stamp on this thing. And if we just go ahead and reset, we can turn the opacity all the way back up. And if we do a shift click here, now you can see that we can just go through and just clean all of this up and make this a black, completely black mask. And you can turn your radius up and stuff too to make this process go a little bit faster. All right, I think that is good and that will be a good mask for us. So we'll go ahead and close that out. And let's grab that puppy and let's drag and drop that. And that will be our mask right there. And we'll just go ahead and open up curves and we'll work on the skull and go ahead and turn on the histogram. We can see everything is right there. We just want to pull all of that up. So now we can pull out all of that brightness and detail. There's some good looking detail that's coming out in there. So, and it's kind of up to you how far you want to pull it up. So I'm just going to gradually pull it up right there reset it maybe pull it up again i think that's okay and then i want to add a little bit of color to it definitely adding in a little bit of green so i think instead of using scnr what we'll do at this point is i'm just going to take the green and just Pull it back just ever so slightly so you don't want to go all the way out to here. But if you just pull it ever so slightly, you can just get a little bit of that green out of there without using SCNR. And that is going to be good. So if we take a look at the image right now, you can see that um, we got our mask on it here. We're going to invert the mask. And now we can work on the background. And if we go to curves transformation, get that bigger view, 
Background doesn't look too bad. Color saturation is pretty well under control. We got rid of, once you get rid of all of those big weird things and blobs that you get, you know, you're pretty well set on there. But what we can do is we can just pull saturation down just a touch. And then if we want to create a little bit of contrast, we can also just pull the background down a little bit more as well. And then that will give us our, our dude, our flying skull. Then we're pretty good to go ahead and get rid of the mask. I think everything looks all right right there. This is just a quick process for everybody. We'll go ahead and pull up our stars here. And when it comes to stars, I love a lot of saturation in my stars. So we'll go ahead and boost those babies up a couple times. You can always, this is obviously always the taste, whatever you want to do, but I kind of go for more of a overall composition and uh, less than, you know, a little bit less than the pretty picture type of thing. And I think I want to go ahead and invert this. And then what we can do is we can use the script delete magenta, correct magenta stars. And then I'll go ahead and get rid of the green. We can invert the image back. So now our star colors are a little bit more under control. And just so this matches my pixel math i'm going to change this now this is of course the pixel math expression that is included with star exterminator and i'm just going to click on stars back here you can see that's the expression right there and we'll hit the button and boom there is our image looking pretty sweet i like to do things that are totally duplicatable and repeatable and all that stuff and again it's all about like the overall composition for me you know when you're shooting these wide field shots you know obviously when you don't have something that's full of nebula and all this kind of stuff it's all about really just kind of you know what can you do so we've got you know some beautiful bright stars that are coming in there and, you know and you can see that we added them back in but we don't have like the big intrusive colors and stuff that we took out um, in that RGB step. We've got some interesting coloring going on inside this thing. Not sure that is all totally accurate, but anyway, this is what it is right now. Now we didn't do any MLT sharpening or anything like that at all. You know, you guys can go ahead and do that. Want to try to keep things as easy as possible here for everybody. But when it comes to shooting targets like this, you know, I find that I need about 16 to 20 hours on these dark nebula. And if they are good, good data, maybe a little bit less. But like I said, half this data is literally twice as good as the other, say 3000 stars versus 1500 stars because of the wildfire smoke and all of that. So one more look at our finished project again, link to everything is below. So if you want to process yourself, let me know how things go. Um, tag me in Astro bin or something. I'm not sure exactly how that all works, but I would love to see your guys' rendition of this. So we will see you all later. Thanks a lot for everything. Peace.